I'd like to welcome you to a very, very special place. We're here with Torsten Velour, who's had now 25 years, is it? Now Almost 30 years. Almost 30 now. years, sorry, with designing for BO, working alongside David Lewis to give us a taste of something of the history of BO's design and what it was like to work with David. So please come and join us. It's quite funny because as a Dane, I had a long history yeah. with BO, you know, back from childhood. Yes. Um, I played with Lego and I did, mm -hmm. I did do a record player once. In Lego? Yeah, actually. Oh, I, excellent. It was from, yes. I've seen an image of it and I felt mm -hmm. it, was, it was really cool. Yeah. It was beautiful. But I think it was also, there was one reason, uh, because when I started doing design, yeah. uh, studying design, uh, and I had this background of, of, of fascination with you know, things, but I wasn't really planning on doing these things. Yeah. But after graduation and this kind of thing, it's like, okay, what do you want to do? Mm. And there was these people who did those fascinating products. Yeah. And there was, for example, this uh, record player. Yeah. And there was this other one I've seen in a book, a model made in 1960, actually oh. not for B&O, but for General Electric. Oh, wow. A really flat yeah. one, super flush, sleek. Yeah. And that model of a product where you say, and even today I feel mm. it's pretty cool, yeah. made before, long before I was born. Yeah. That's fascinating. Yes. Well, and then from there, the rest, as they say, is history. So what was it like to work with David Lewis? Well, I was, I mean, David's actually a rather special guy, a rather mm. shy introvert, and, and, um, but so dedicated into creating things. Yeah. And um, coming there the first day into his rather messy office mm -hmm. with a table in front of me where he was sitting, just sit there. Yeah. And, and, um, and I was newly educated designer. Mm -hmm. He asked me uh, and asked him, what should I do? And he said, I want you to do a phone, right. a landline phone, but it's wireless. Oh, and yeah. um, I was like, uh, yeah, but do you have any brief or what is any, uh, what, what should it do? Mm -hmm. and, he, and he said, no, you have to figure it out. Oh. You have to find an idea that is strong enough wow. it, to right. be a product. Yeah. And so that was his take on it. Yeah. And I remember how confused it was in the beginning mm -hmm. to work with him because yeah. he could, when he passed through, it was a pretty small office. We were mm -hmm. four people all in all. Yeah. And he would daily pass through your desk and mm -hmm. see what you were doing and sometimes yeah. come in it. And maybe in the morning he would say, you turn right. Yeah. And next time you meet him, he would say, turn left. Right. And there was no logic oh, into that. it. And in the beginning, it was so tough yeah. because where, where do you want to go? Yeah. But when I figured out that he didn't have an idea, mm -hmm. it was the process and I had to figure yes. out where to go. He yeah. was just the eyes, the fresh right. eyes who came yeah. and had his instant reaction to what right. we were doing. Yes. When I realized that, it was so helpful. Yeah. Because first of all, I wouldn't think about where's the logic in mm -hmm. behind the words. Yeah. But second, he could help me with the things that are the main trouble you typically face as designers. Mm -hmm. yeah. That you become blind while you're working. You are so obsessed with your intention that you really don't see what you're doing. Yes. We all know that when we're designing that. We can, when we look at our colleagues' things, we can actually mm -hmm. see where they're heading, see what's wrong, what to do. Then you go back to your own desk, look at your own stuff, and you become blind again. Yes. Yeah. I know the, uh, some of the earlier b &O designers, yeah, mm -hmm. like Jakob Jensen, he had a phrase where he was making a model, mm -hmm. putting on the light on, going back home, and then next morning he should see it and mm -hmm. get this kind of instant reaction to it yeah. to try to get the fresh eyes. Oh, Basically the same yeah. David was doing with me. Yes. And... For me, it's fascinating how, how, um, how good he was in that. Mm -hmm. um, there were, how 
how he was able to instant read his own reaction to what he's seeing. Yes. Trying to cut off the brain and an analytic part and just see. And you, you had the opportunity to um, to reimagine one of his designs with BLAB 8000 becoming your, your design of BLAB 18. How did that feel? Was, I imagine that must have been quite an honour to, to I didn't, work through something like that. Well, it felt the opposite. Because, mm. I mean, when I started on that one, yeah. uh, David had just passed away. Ah, and it came pretty yeah. sudden because the week before, mm -hmm. we had been working on models and, yeah. and we had a, uh, something we had to present on B&O. And oh, yeah. Thursday, he went home and, mm -hmm. and I had to go to B&O on Friday. And he said, well... Right don't fall during the weekend, we can just talk mm -hmm. Monday about yeah. how things were going on. Yeah. And then during the weekend, his wife phoned me and yeah. said he's actually ill, so he would not come Monday, he's, yeah. he's uh, ill. And then during that week, it became so bad that he yeah. passed away. Oh. So that's so fast. Yes, I'm sorry, um, I hadn't realized that the time was that close. But, uh, I think maybe in some way you could say for him, mm -hmm. lucky that he somehow, you know, managed to do the things he liked yes. and loved all the way mm -hmm. to the end. Yes. Uh, but for the rest of us, it was pretty... Mm. Yeah, that must have been very shocking. difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and quite f soon after that, Biano asked me to, like, can you redo the 8,000? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, of course, I, mm. I wasn't really into this kind of redoing stuff. I no. felt, no, this is like the marketing way of thinking. And mm. we had at that time, you had the mini launch, the yes. relaunch of the mini mm. car. And it was like, ah, I'd rather that people were mm. trying to do something new instead of like taking up old classics. Yeah. So I was actually against this kind of thinking. Mm. Uh, but they kept, and then to mess up with David's work mm. would be like oh, kind of yes. suicide in yeah. some way. Yeah. Uh, but after some time and persistence, mm. why not? Yes. Let's give it a shot. Yeah. And so it ended up being mm. the 18. Yeah. But I think they're a real success. Uh, it's one of my favourite, oh, all-time favourite designs. Um, I think I, I mentioned to you earlier, I always see, I imagine BLAB 8000 as the first ever track from your favourite band when they started to play. And BLAB 18 is the, the crafted, developed mm. version of after they've had a few years touring and they, they work well together. And it just... To me, it feels like a logical flow that it's, BLAB 18 has, but, has matured. So I mean, it's, that's really it. nice of you to say that, I think. But in some, I, I kind of understand what you're saying mm. in some way because I fully respect the thinking behind BLAB 8000. Yes. It's such a brilliant invention mm. by a mind who can really break consensus. Yes. And the only thing I could do in that way is saying, like, like, take that thinking and give it my shape yes but be faithful to that thinking yeah and i think that's that's the mm. 18 so you could say in that way the spirit was continued yes um but david had this ability of of breaking consensus in this kind of new way where it's so new radically yes. new but mm -hmm. that yet completely logic, which is yes. one of the core sentences, I think, mm. uh, for piano. There were things that you couldn't expect to come. And it's, it, it should be a product like when you ask somebody, what is the next piano thing? They should not be able at all to foresee what comes. No. But when it's there, and maybe the second time you see it, mm. it becomes such a natural new member of the family. Yes. That's what he could do so many, again and again and again. Yes. And I got that with the first thing I ever saw mm -hmm. uh, from him. He had done, finished the, the Beo Sound 9000. Oh, yes. That's which icon. Uh, wasn't yeah. launched on the market yet. Mm -hmm. But they have finished, he had finished it and they talked about it in the studio. Yeah. And I was skeptic. Mm -hmm. was, ah, that doesn't really sound like a B&O product. Because at that time, you had these black boxes. Yes. With this sledge mm -hmm. and this carousel of these six, six CDs yeah. inside and the awful sound when they close yes. and everything is hidden in there. And mm -hmm. it's like kind of for me a discount way of listening to music. Yeah. So I was like, no, no. by the description of it, mm -hmm. I was really negative. Yeah. 
And then when I went to Stroer the first time, mm. after working with David for half a year mm. and was finished with the Beocom 2 yeah. first design mock-up, plus two others that was presented also. And I went up with David to B&O yeah. to present this one. And there in the corner, there was this final design mock-up of the Beocom 9000. Yes. And I was like, whoo, that is amazing. You yeah. got this kind of mm. instant, wow, so different, yeah. so cool, so fresh, so radically different, yes. mm. but really logic in all the way. Yeah. And when you look at this, and I use this as maybe the Bible of what we should do as designers. Yes. It's like the, the light, light, the things to, to hunt. Yeah. Because you look at it and it keeps being attracted to you yes. because the idea is so strong yeah. and the shape mm -hmm. is shaped completely according to the idea and not mm. the time, not the fashion. Yes. Yeah. And when the idea is strong enough, it survives the times. Exactly. And that's why you still love it today. That's and that's why, why I'm so happy that they have relaunched it with yes. the 9000 C. Oh, yes. Because it, it still looks exactly in time and in place doesn't exactly it? It, yeah and i think it made as you say it were the time cds would go inside a machine and never be seen again yeah. and with the 9000 you could celebrate them exactly yeah. you could line up your music by color and, and they would turn the discs to the to put the label the right way exactly and, all these details oh, yes. and, and, and this dedication put yes. into it was yeah. so fascinating but also if you look at it all the balance of the element mm. the 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 mm. The sheet of aluminium repeated by the glass sheet in yes. front, the cutout to highlight the CDs, and mm -hmm. the natural aluminium color of the clamper. Yes. So the movement became visible and strong. Yeah. And the rest just hidden in a little black box. Yes. I think yes. the whole balance of these things is really brilliant. Yeah. And I think even the choice of having six discs. I, I saw um, a design years and years ago in Struel with 10 CDs. Yeah. And I thought, wow, that's incredible, but it doesn't feel right. You had 10 and you yeah. had ones where you have them on both sides and you yeah. had one with a cassette desk also. They tried a lot of things yeah. to see. And typically for that time, uh, they were just, they were not really defining the product until mm. they had something that defines itself. Yes. And I think that's one of the reason, one of the lessons here yeah. that because I had this reaction when it was verbally described to me, mm -hmm. it was absolutely no go. No. Had I been right. a decision maker, I would say no, negative. Well, yeah. But it's, so it's not about the description, it's not no. the brief, it's not all this planning ahead of a product no. that defines if it's good or not. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the execution yes. of the thing. Yes. And I'm not talking about details or, or refinement, it's more about like, transforming this mm -hmm. into a real strong idea. Yes. That's it's, where the mm -hmm. magic comes in. Yeah. And I think that's why they work like that in this many years, because yeah. the, the way b &O worked with designers is actually pretty unique, or was yeah. really unique at that time. Mm -hmm. Because you had, designers were independent. Right, yeah. Had their own studio but at the same time was so closely connected with BNO. Yes. David, he had uh, weekly meetings. Mm -hmm. So the rhythm was Monday to Thursday afternoon, he was in the office with us. Yeah. Thursday afternoon, he would load in his car the new models and drove the four hour drive up yes. to Stroer and sleep at the hotel. Mm -hmm. And then the Friday, he would have meetings the whole day. Yeah half hour long meetings or one hour long meetings, meetings after meetings after meeting in the same room, yep. up at the top, at, uh, under the red roof in, oh, in yes. uh, factory nine, I mm -hmm. think it was called. Yeah. And then each team would come up into him on their slot, yep. present where they were and what, and they would discuss how to solve this issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some of the issues could be handled on site some was issue you brought back home to work on the next mm -hmm. week. Yeah. And sometimes you were presenting new ideas. Right. So it was a continuous loop of 
discussing projects on a quite different level of matureness. Yes. And those people involved there were us as designer, mm -hmm. the core group of conceptual engineers mm -hmm. working together. Yeah. Nothing more. Right. No involvement with marketing, no mm -hmm. involvement of business, not even yeah. CEO. Right. And so, and you kept on working in a very closed loop mm -hmm. with a timeline defined by the project itself. Yes. And in that rather lean mm -hmm. process where every meeting was with people who were able to give the right feedback mm -hmm. and make decisions, yeah. you could move on. Yes. Yeah. Until you came to a place where you could present mm -hmm. a design mock-up to, the, let's say, the CEO. Well, thank you. It's been it's been an absolute inspiration um, having time with you, having a, a look around the studio, and uh, and hearing about your background of with B and O and with working with with David Lewis. And it's a real privilege. So thank you very much, Torsten. It's really been a pleasure to, to have you here, visit you. here and talk with you. I can sense your dedication and, and, and yeah. love for Bang Olsen. Thank you very much for watching and uh, please join us soon for more videos.